Star Wars fans, welcome to episode 4 of Star Wars Go Figure. Um, my name is Jesse Collins and today is Saturday the 22nd of September in 2018. Uh, it's been a few weeks, um, I've, I took a couple of weeks off um, of work, um, so I spent a lot of time with my wife and doing some stuff around the house. Um, I've been back at work for just over a week now, so I'm... Uh, yeah, it was a good break. We haven't really had a good break since the wedding back in May, and even then that was sort of just catching up with things that we'd sort of let go while we were planning the wedding and getting into that. So it's been it's been good, um, but I'm really happy to be back in the saddle, back on the Tauntaun, ready to talk some Star Wars, um, even though particularly the last couple of weeks I've been pretty invested in that new Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 4. Um I've, I've almost completed it. I've completed the story. I'm at about 98%. Um, so I've been pretty solidly into that the last couple of weeks. Um, I've got some new comics and stuff to catch up reading. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that. But uh, yeah, let's dig into some Star Wars news items. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of major stuff happening in the last few weeks. But uh, I've got a little list here of things I want to talk about. So we'll start with some Resistance news. Now, StarWarsNewsNet.com, it's, it's a site that I've only just recently started following. Um, they post an article from a, with a source from a German site called Jedi, Jedi Biblio, Bibliothek, Bibliotech? I'm not sure. It's, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but the list of the first four episode titles, um, the first is airing on October the 7th. Um, so only a couple of weeks away, really, until we start getting into Resistance. Um, it still feels like it's, it could be a way off, but it's only a couple of weeks away, which is pretty exciting. Um, so the ep episode titles are... Episode 1 is The Recruit. Episode 2 is The Triple Dark. Episode 3 is Fuel for the Fire. Um, and Episode 4 is The High Tower. So it, no, nothing, nothing really giving away there. Um, fuel for the fire that will ignite the spark against the first order. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it's got a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks to go till resistance. And we recently, as well, um, since my last episode, which was a few weeks ago now, they released the uh, character names and a bit of background information on them. I haven't got that information with me, but. Um, I'm I'm excited to see Stephen Stanton get a get a sort of a permanent role as a main character in in a show. He's a fantastic voice artist. He's done uh, Captain Tarkin in the Clone Wars. He did Meba Gascon. He did Old Ben Kenobi in Rebels, among just to name a few. Um, but I'm really excited to see him as well as Donald Faison, um, Turk from Scrubs. If you remember, um, he's got his own character called Hype Faison, uh, which. Dave Filoni created this character just for Donald Faison, which is fantastic. And uh, check out Donald Faison on uh, on Instagram. I can't think of what his what his handle is off the top of my head, but he's been messing around with some Star Wars Black series. He's obviously into the toys and stuff, which is awesome. He's a big Star Wars fan, but he does his stop. He's been toying around with stop motions, and he's been uploading a few little clips to Instagram. So definitely check them out. I hope I hope we see a lot more from. From them, uh, we also got a bit of a uh, bit of news for casting for episode nine. So we'll dive into that. Um, on my last episode, Lockie and I briefly brought up Dominic Monaghan. Um, so he's definitely in. He's confirmed. He's apparently been filming scenes already, which is exciting. Um, not long after we spoke, uh, Matt Smith was announced as a new cast member as well. Uh, for those who don't know, he's the 11th Doctor in Doctor Who. I think he's the 11th. I'm not a Doctor Who buff, so I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure he's the 11th. But he's also uh, Prince Philip in The Crown, which is another show I haven't seen. Uh, Greg Grunberg is back as Snap. Snap Wexley from Episode 7. I'm really excited to sort of see... These characters that sort of got pushed aside, like we got some, we got to know some resistance characters in uh, in episode seven, like like Snap Wexley and Jessica Parva, and hopefully we get both of them back. Uh, Jessica Henwick that plays Jessica Parva, she's recently just been in the second season of Iron Fist, and she was kick ass in that. So hopefully we see those characters come up. She's had a pretty big arc in the Poe Dameron comic series as well, which I'm not 100% up to date with. 
um, looking forward to looking forward to getting that last that last trade when that's released so I can finish up that story I don't buy the single issues but like I said Greg Grunberg back as Snap Wexley that's all we confirmed um, I got to meet Greg Grunberg a couple of years ago now he was here at Supernova Pop Culture Expo here in Adelaide and he was an absolute gentleman I was really excited to meet him I got his autograph I wish I got a photo with him that would have been that would have been cool too but he was a really good guy and yeah all, all that's awesome for him to be back as Snap Wexley Obviously, J.J. Abrams wasn't going to let that get pushed aside. Most recently, there's been a little bit of a uh, little bit of talk about Andy Serkis as well and what he's up to. Um, it's purely speculation, so take this with a grain of salt. There's been a few sites saying that he's he's, he's cancelled an appearance at Keystone Comic Con in Philadelphia, and uh, apparently due to a scheduling conflict. So there's a little bit of whispers that we're going to see Snoke again. I don't think we're going to see him come back to life at all in any sort of way um but it's more likely we're we're going to hear about him we might get some flashbacks i know we t- started toying with the flashback idea in the sequel trilogy which i kind of like um i would pers- personally like to see a prequel film uh you know they're showing now we've just seen the captain marvel trailer which is fantastic i'm excited for that but but saying that I'm directly talking about the de-aging of Samuel Jackson and Marvel's done a great job of this uh, they've done Michael Douglas they've done Robert Downey Jr um, so we've seen flashbacks with these characters and they look fantastic so there's absolutely no reason they can't pull back you know Mark Hamill 10 years um, make Adam Driver look a little bit like a you know young 20 year old as opposed to a late 20 year old early 30 year old that he is appearing in the sequel trilogy and do something with Snoke. We can have a little flashback. We have these little scenes that flick back. But I, w- I would personally prefer, you know, a prequel movie in between, like the fall of the fall of Ben Solo or something like that. Um, so yeah, the, there's going to be continuing speculation um, around what Andy Serkis is doing at the moment, which which is cool. I'll, I I really enjoy the speculation. I don't think we're going to see Snoke come back to life. I think he's he. he he got his due in um in um the last Jedi, and but you know you know Darth Maul came back you know after fifteen years or whatever, and we thought he was he was toast he was cut in half, but uh, Snoke looked pretty dead there with his tongue hanging out of his mouth. But that would be interesting. So we will see. So that's that's pretty much. Oh, there's some other bits and pieces out there, like some some set photos that have been leaked around the place, so you can definitely go and find them. But aside from that, it's pretty quiet on the episode nine front, which is okay by me. Um, I'm happy to speculate for the next twelve months, or it won't be twelve months. We'll get a trailer in April, I suppose. So uh, a little bit of game news came out. It's not really news. It was more just a statement. The new new Star Wars game, Fallen Jedi, which is apparently about a a Jedi survivor after Order 66 and, you know, them being on the run from being killed, basically. Um, someone has been quoted as saying it's a spiritual successor to The Force Unleashed. Um, I'm a massive fan of those games. Uh, I felt... I, f- I wish they had a pushed on and done a third, but I don't know that the second one... The gameplay was great. I think the story sort of lacked a little bit of punch that the first one had. But, you know, that's a 10-year-old game now, like the first Force Unleashed. Oh, I think they were incredibly successful. Um, but in terms of gameplay, I'm looking forward to jumping into a game that has that sort of similar gameplay. And uh, just playing the Spider-Man game that I've been playing, like the physics and, you know, all the stuff, all the, just the, I'm no gamer, but <laughs> but just the look of these games now are extremely impressive. Um, and if you bump the Force Unleashed sort of style of gameplay into a sort of modern era, new story. I think we're in for a treat. Um, I'm really hoping the gaming side of Star Wars can really pick up. Uh, Battlefront 2 didn't really... The story was fantastic, but the sort of multiplayer gameplay hasn't really drawn me back in like the first one did. Um, like I said, I'm not a gamer, and I'm not really that good at it. <laughs> so, uh, But I... I they do a great job with the environments. I think they look fantastic. The character designs are great. 
Um, I'm just I'm just excited to have a good linear sort of single player story that I can play on my own time. Um, don't have to worry about people being online. So hopefully that's something that we can uh, we can look forward to. And the Force Unleashed that was that was that was good times. Um, there was a few years there where those games came out. We had figures and you know books and comics and tie-in material and you know it's not, it's not canon now, but they're still great stories. Um, I thought it was really interesting. So we'll move on now to a bit of toy news. Um, I'll start off with some Six Inch Black series stuff. Uh, there have been some reveals recently over the last few weeks. Uh, we got one. In to- Robot Kingdom put it up, and they they put up pre-orders for this. They were the first ones to sort of leak the first image and and reveal it, I suppose. Um, but Hasbro sort of told them they had to pull it down and you know refund orders, whatever. So they did that. But it's a UK exclusive two pack, Hoth, Han, and Leia. Um, both look like great figures. They're sort of displayed incorrectly in the box. Like they've, they've, the, the way they've set up this box, it's a really nice display. It looks fantastic. It's in the snow cave, uh, the ice cave, and it's it's based around that sort of walking, talking argument that they sort of have early on in Empire Strikes Back. But the Han Solo figure is, you know, in that scene, he's wearing the sort of Bespin outfit that we've just had a figure of released. Uh, recently, so they've given him the snow, his his Hoth snow jacket, <laughs> whatever you know the one that we got blue one and brown one. You know they keep mixing it up, but uh, this one, yeah, he's got a brown jacket, hoods down, and he's got this sort of soft goods around his neck. It looks pretty cool. I'm not big fan of the sort of woolly soft goods. It may grow on me when I see it in person, see some more pictures, but uh, yeah, they're just. They're still playing with this brown coat, brown coat, blue coat thing, which we've already got a Han Solo Hoth that came with the, he came with the Tauntaun. Yeah, he came with the Tauntaun. And he had the blue coat and the hood up, and you couldn't pull the hood down. So this one's got the hood down, but he's wearing the brown jacket. So <laughs> we're getting, we're getting another Han Solo. The layer looks great, um, but more than likely, it looks to just be a deluxe version of the. Bespin escape layer that's coming out with a different head sculpt. Obviously, her hairstyle is different in that in between those scenes, but she's sort of just got that extra sort of uh, vest on as well. So it'll be interesting to see whether that, whether they're very different. I should have that Target exclusive Bespin escape layer within the next week, I think. Um, it got shipped. I bought it a couple of weeks ago and it got shipped out pretty quickly. So it shouldn't really shouldn't be that far away. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so stay tuned to my YouTube channel and I'll have a review of that up the day I get it. And, uh, yeah, I'll put some photos on Instagram when that comes in too. There was another one mentioned uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I don't think I spoke about this one. But as a Mimban Han Solo. So Han Solo in his sort of Stormtrooper Mimban gear. That looks like a really good figure. And I've seen... Oh, people have... I'm not, I don't know how I've seen it. Or people have just spoken about it. Maybe people have just spoken about it. But he comes with the full mask that you put over his face underneath the, you know, the sort of helmet that sort of General Veers has. And uh, you could you could just completely just stick that over Han Solo's face and have a Mimban Trooper, which is interesting. Um, so, But hopefully we just get a regular Mimban Trooper as well. But that looks like a good figure. It looks like a pretty good detail. Um, I like the I like that look of the Troopers there on, uh, on Mimban. And hopefully he's got the helmet that can pop off as well. Most recently, I think, was the Dryden Voss figure. That's, that's that one. That one looks pretty cool. Um, it's interesting because there's apparently like an 18 month turnaround between character design and when the figure hits the shelf. So we'll see how far away it is. Whether it's just still quite early on in the process. But um, I'm, I can't can't see how long it's been it doesn't feel like it's been that long since you know we found out that Paul Bettany was going to be taking on that role and was cast as that role of Dryden Voss but it could very well be 18 months so be interesting and the cool thing about the figure is his scars on his face like you remember in the movie he's got the scars down his face um, that that, you know they flare up right red when he starts getting a bit pissed off Uh, this one there's it's got like a heat change paint or temperature change paint so I, was, I imagine when you put your warm fingers or warm hands over his head, like the scars light up red, which which hasn't been done before that I'm aware of, that I remember. Um, I'm pretty cluey about the figures and stuff, so this is a really cool thing. Um, so I'm very interested in that figure. 
in terms of the th regular three and three quarter inch lines, some new figures are getting out there at the moment. Um, from the, I think it's Wave 4? Wave 3 or 4 of the sort of solo bunch. You know, Wave 2 and 3 didn't really have any many new ones in it. They sort of put out Kylo Ren and then uh, Jedi Luke and Hoth Leia and we've had a couple of couple of small waves not really punching out new characters. So this one's probably the most the most appealing. Um, from Forlom to Zuckus, uh, check out their Facebook or Instagram. He put up some pics of Rio, Val, Beckett and L3. Uh, I think it was a UK toy store, online toy store that put these things out. And they look pretty cool. Uh, the Royal Guards in the wave as well. Yeah, episode 6, Return of the Jedi, Red, Imperial Royal Guard. So I'm definitely going to try... I'm definitely hoping to get a couple of those Royal Guards. Because uh, yeah, I've only got one from back in the Power of the Force 2 days. Uh, and yeah, I'd like a couple of new modern ones. You know, they're not super articulated and I wasn't particularly thrilled with that vintage collection one that came out a few years ago the figure underneath the robes was sick but the uh you know the way you had to sort of tape up the robes to sort of look like it flows and sits good i'd rather have a solid plastic i think it looks a bit better but uh rio val beckett and l3 from solo they look fantastic um you know for five poa or whatever they are they're going to be maybe some wrist joints as well in there uh, they look they look really really good. I'm looking forward to adding them to the solo wave. Speaking of the solo wave, I recently just got a loose Han Solo from Solo from the vintage collection uh, from Tung Hori, the eBay seller. There's I've been buying from him for a long time. A lot of people do, but he's from Wave Two of the vintage collection. Two of th waves two and three have started hit th hitting throughout North America and Canada. Uh, you know, there's Emphis Nest in the second wave. Han Solo, like I just mentioned. Uh, Death Trooper, which is a repack from the Black Series. And what was the other one? Uh, the new... No, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's, just, there's something else. I'm completely blanking on it. But uh, yeah, there's lots of repacks that we've already had. There's, like I said, you know, we've had Genoso, Kylo Ren, uh, the, the Storm Trooper. Uh, you know, all the figures in the first wave are repacks except for Snoke. You know... It's it's kind of a bit of a bummer on this line. Like we've been buying these figures all these years, and we've got most of them. So I suppose if you're buying them for the for the vintage card, that sort of works out well. Um. But uh, yeah, you know, if you're in it for for the figures and you're an opener, you know, there's not really a lot of new stuff coming out at the moment. There's a few here and there, but a lot of repacks are coming out, which is a bit of a bummer. So it'll be interesting to see when we start getting maybe into the waves, you know, six, seven. Are we going to start seeing some lots of new cool stuff? I know the uh, the three and three quarter range trooper is going to come out in a vintage card. I think it's just sort of, I think that's part of the wave three actually. But you know, we've got Force Awakens or Last Jedi Luke Skywalker, and I have a real issue with that one actually. It was I was looking at images of that on the card, and you know, the picture of Luke's not even straight. Like it's not even on the card like half of him sort of well you know some of the some of him is actually cut out of the image he's standing there holding the lightsaber yet they haven't put the lightsaber hilt in the packaging with the figure um and the bubble's just way too big like luke's only a small figure and you know they've they've put this gigantic bubble on a card that's you know it's it's unnecessary i just think they should, this needs to be a little bit more thought into this into this rec, you know returning vintage collection it needs to be a selling point. It needs to be, you know, on point. It needs to be, you know, the best of the best. And we had that through 2010 to 2013 with the Vintage Collection. Some of those figures, you know, there was a couple of rough ones in there, but most of them were the best of the best. And I just watched a video this morning of the new um, Enfys Nest from Customs for the Kid. And it was sort of showing the new Enfys Nest on the... Uh, on the vintage collection, you know, the helmets, you know, really poorly detailed in comparison to the one that we got with the with the swoop bike in the you know, the basic five point of articulation line. So sort of ran through how to do a head swap so that the head looks better than the one you actually get in the vintage collection. Well they should be like they should be, you know, as good as each other. You know, they should be the vintage collection one should be better. Yeah, what can you do? There's not a lot not a lot you can do there. Um so but you know I'm pretty into customizing and stuff and the Han Solo that I just got from the vintage collection the uh you know the the young solo I actually had to do a head swap because the paint apps on the vintage one 
were pretty bad. Like the eyes were like halfway down his face. And I know that like eBay seller, he just picks one out of a box, throws it in a bag and sends it off. Like there's no sort of, yeah. I was a little bit bummed out that I had to do that. I had to do that head swap and, you know, now I've got one figure that I bought with the, with the force length thing, you know, it's basically a wasted figure now. I've had to just push that one aside because it's inferior to the one I've got. And, uh, the, yeah, the, the other frustrating thing is that, you know, it's four months after the movie. Four months after the movie came out and we're only just getting a single carded, like a single packaged Han Solo figure. That should have been in the first wave. They should have been on store, on shelves, hanging on the pegs the day that movie came out. Um, the first wave of the figures to come out should have been had a Han Solo in there. Should have had a Lando. Uh, Lando only came out in the two-pack. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting a little bit ranty. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit fired up. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and keep my cool. I've got the figures I want. That's okay. It looks like we're going to be getting uh, a new Lando as well in, in the vintage collection from Solo, a Star Wars story. Speaking of which... It's almost out on a home video, which is exciting. Uh, only a couple of weeks here. Comes out October 3rd here in Australia, so about a week away. A week away, gift card. A week away. <laughs> um, yeah, it came out about a week or week and a half ago on digital. Um, got my copy. I'm excited. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to... I'm not going to watch the special features until I get the disc. Um, I'm looking forward to getting those discs. I've got to go and pre-order them this afternoon. Uh... I've pre-ordered the steelbook copy from jbhifi.com.au. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. That looks pretty cool. So that should come to me either on the day or the day after release. If you pre-order at Sanity, uh, Sanity Movies, Sanity, I think it's just Sanity, um, you get a poster. So I'm looking forward to getting that. Hopefully the vinyl soundtrack isn't that far away. They usually They usually chase the movies pretty quickly. Um, so I'll keep my eye open on Amazon for that. But, uh, yeah, I recently picked up Unrelated. I recently got, this week, I got the Hot Toys Ray from The Last Jedi. And, uh, super impressed with that figure. Uh, I've got all three Rays now from, from Hot Toys. And, yeah, I'm completely blown away. I did not know that she was going to come with a swap out arm with a light up effect. Um, comes with the light up lightsaber hilt and two blades so you get the regular standard blade and then you get a blade that's got a sort of, it's sort of uh, what's the way what's the way to describe it it looks like it's in a like a bit of a waving action so it's sort of uh, <laughs> that's that's the best way i can describe it but uh yeah that's that's a really great figure it comes with a couple of porgs um i got that through popculture.com.au uh you know the only way i can afford to get them from there is they offer afterpay which is which is fantastic which means i can you know I can put eighty dollars a month towards that, as opposed to having to fork out, you know, three hundred odd dollars. Plus, I got some money off. I had some points there, so I got it a little bit cheaper as well. So that always helps. And uh, yeah, pop culture are always pretty good. But I'm looking forward to looking forward to what what one I decide to get on next. I haven't haven't picked that out yet. But uh, yeah, speaking of soundtracks, as I was going through before, I got to attend Star Wars in concert for the first time last Saturday night. So a week ago. Um, they performed A New Hope it was the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra they played at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre um, I was absolutely blown away that was an experience I'll never forget um, yeah that was just it was so it just made me smile through the whole thing and really had a deeper appreciation for that music I love the soundtrack to A New Hope but it was a bonus just being able to see A New Hope on a big screen again um, you know, we were pretty close, so it looked pretty big on the screen. And I haven't seen A New Hope on a, on a big cinema screen for, you know, over 20 years since the special editions came out. Um, and that was, it was, it was a really exciting night. I, got, I went with my wife and her dad, and uh, I met up with Lockie, who was on the last episode, and his girlfriend, um, which was cool to catch up with them again. And, uh, yeah, it was, re it was just a really good show. And I can't wait for the next one. It's We're getting Empire Strikes Back here as well um, on May the 4th next year. So that'll be my first wedding anniversary. But we're not sure if we're still going to be in America um, following Celebration. Which is, obviously, I've mentioned before that we're heading over for Star Wars Celebration. 
I'm not 100% sure whether we're going to be back in time, but I, I really want to. I really want to be back for that. Um, so I think we're going to try and make it work. Um, Empire Strikes Back is my favourite movie, and to be able to see that on wedding anniversary would be pretty, pretty damn special. But that was really exciting, and, you know, I was sort of posted about it on Instagram, and the conductor of the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra on the evening, he actually commented on my... Uh, post and said you know thanks for coming i'm glad you had a great time and i sort of went through i went and looked through him his name's nicholas buck um i looked through his instagram and found he'd recently just met steven spielberg and john williams over in los angeles so that was quite exciting and then then i was led on to the fact that he does a podcast called art of the score you know if you're into music soundtracks they've done about 17 or 18 episodes now him and a couple of other guys, um, I can't remember their names off the top of my head, I've only just listened to two episodes, uh, listened to two episodes, they broke down the Force Awakens score, um, the Force Awakens score is probably one of my favourites, that's one of my favourite soundtracks, um, and just to hear guys that are, you know, they're in the know, they're in the profession, they know music, uh, they didn't make me feel like an idiot for not understanding terms, when they use their terminology and their jargon, so to speak, um, they do a really good job of explaining what that means um, and demonstrating what they're talking about, which is absolutely amazing. And it just it gave me an all new appreciation for that Force Awakens soundtrack. I've listened to that countless times, um, and you know, there's some moments in that soundtrack that just fill me with deep emotion. <laughs> and you know, hearing these guys talk about. You know, that moment where Ray puts her hand out. You know, you think Kylo Ren's going to force grab the lightsaber and it's going to come to him, swing straight past his face into Ray's hands. And they play the music from when Luke arrives at the homestead in A New Hope. They directly drop that track straight into The Force Awakens. And they just they sort of discuss how they felt emotionally when they first saw that. And I couldn't agree with them more. So if you if you want a good, good uh, music podcast, they get into some James Bond They've done some Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, a few other movies. They've done Star Wars and New Hope, which I'm going to listen to. They did three episodes on that. I haven't, that's what I'm going to listen to next. Definitely recommend it. Art of the Score. Check them out on Instagram and Facebook. And that just about wraps things up for this episode, guys. I appreciate you listening. Um, had a great, lots of great bunch of feedback on the last episode uh, that that I did with Lockie. Um, you're definitely going to see him again. We're going to catch up and hopefully do another one of these soon. I uh, haven't got any direct plans. We've thrown a, thrown, a, thrown a few ideas between each other. So hopefully we can do get together and do that again real soon. Because, yeah, I think I think we both had a blast. I was speaking on behalf of myself. Um, but, yeah, we both had a blast recording that. And I think after we finished recording, we sat around and talked for... You know, stood around and talked in my soul's room for about another hour and a half. So... That was, that was a really good time. Um, so, yeah, like I said, <laughs> we'll do it again. Um, check me out online. You can find me around the place on Instagram, at The Forces With Jesse, on Facebook, at The Forces With Jesse. Subscribe to the channel here on YouTube, uh, forward slash The Forces With Jesse. I'm on iTunes and Podbean, and you can find me there. Drop me a five-star rating on iTunes. That would be awesome. And I will drop any episode info through social platforms um, in the future. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and listening or listening. Um, yeah, drop some feedback. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to hear. Um, if there's anything you want to know that I can talk about, definitely up for some suggestions. Uh, yeah, always welcome. Have a great weekend. Until my next episode, may the force be with you.